Today we're going to uh, assemble or attempt to create or make a uh, lifting tripod. Um, I've adopted a local cemetery in need of uh, repair. A lot of tilted, uh, tipped over headstones, bases that need re-leveling. And uh, now I'm past the point of uh, just leverage. Now I need something to lift. In searching on the internet and watching other uh, videos of those that uh, uh, reset monuments, gravestones, uh, they've used uh, lifting tripods, commercial units that I've seen run anywhere from, you know, probably starting at $1,500 to $2,000. Uh, I'm going to try uh, uh, to MacGyver something together. I've seen people use 4x4s, 2x4s. Uh, I'm a little hesitant to do that. Uh, the other thing is I wanted something of a telescoping nature um, that I could disassemble that would fit in. It would actually fit in the trunk of your car or in my case I've got a short bed, short box pickup. So what I'm using is three uh, floor jacks uh, commonly used in the basement to support uh, the floor joists above. Um, so you can see that, uh, so I've got a two-ton chain hoist that I had on hand. Um, so initially, depending on how high you want to lift, um, these will extend to approximately uh, eight feet, uh, fully telescoped. Um, so that's my starting point. What we'll need to do is drill um, holes at the top of these uh, th three tubes and there that will allow me to attach I've got a grade 8 bolt uh, the strongest bolt possible and what that'll do is uh, bolt these three tubes together and also include a loop of chain uh, in between them. So when the chain, or excuse me, when the tripod is actually set up, this chain, sorry for the loud noise, this chain will hang down below and that's what I'll hook my tripod on. So the first thing I did was uh, I took my uh, uh, long level here. Let me, let me uh, get this on a stand and uh, I'll show you how I, I marked well, I'll just explain it. I just took my long uh, uh, six foot level and laid it alongside the, uh, the tubing here. And basically what I'm trying to do is I'll end up drilling a hole 5 8 to 11 16 to accept this bolt. And I'm trying to get it uh, square, two holes. So I just used a, uh, my, the edge of my level to line up with these holes and I'll drill another hole. The existing holes down there uh, on the end are basically about one inch centered from the end. So that's what I'm gonna do here on each of, each of these pipes is drill uh, one inch in from the end. And again, to accept this bolt. So let's uh, proceed with that and uh, start to drilling. Okay, I've drilled uh, quarter inch pilot holes in each tube. I use my drill press, uh, but you could definitely use a uh, hand drill. Now we're gonna step it up to uh, probably an 11 16 drill bit. Uh, the bolt is 5 eighths, but uh, with the 11 16 that'll give me a little, uh, a little freer play to uh, assemble it. And the, the pre-drilled pre holes, in these are at least 11 16 if not uh, a little bit bigger. So you can see that there's some play allowed for, allowed for easier alignment and installation of the, uh, the pins. Uh, I'm gonna be using some 5 8 bolts, but the pins that came with the set are 5 8 diameter uh, with this kind of a cap nut. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be using those or not, um, because I'm going to be assembling and disassembling, so I'll need a, a preferably a hex head. 
like these bolts so I've got something to grip and grab onto as I uh, assemble and disassemble. So let's go ahead and uh, drill some drill some bigger holes in the end of my tubes. Okay, I've uh, drilled the um, holes. I was able to go straight from a quarter inch pilot hole to an 11 16 So now let's uh, quickly mock up um, um, the top of the tripod. Remember to insert your chain. And you can see because I used an 11 16 hole, the bolts slide through fairly easy. It's not a uh, precise fit. And then we'll end up putting uh, probably two nuts on here as, uh, as a lock, locking mechanism. So now when I erect this, basically my hoist is, or my chain hoist is gonna go here. I did uh, see, um, I tried to leave this a little loose or you might even wanna go, I was an inch from the back, depending on the length of your chain. Um, you may want to, well, or be cognizant that if you make this tightness together as is, your chain won't be able to flip, flip over and hang down in the middle. So I'm going to have to experiment that placement of the chain, possibly take out a few links before uh, I do final assembly on the top head. So I'll play with that and uh, show you the results. Okay, so here's our initial mock-up without the uh, extensions put in. Uh, so you can see, you know, our chain is meant to accept the hoist hook there. Um, I haven't shortened it yet, as yet. So currently I just uh, uh, bought two feet of that chain and uh, it was the, uh, this, and the size was basically whatever would fit over this 5 8 bolt. So it's probably a little heavier duty chain than I, I really need here. Uh, but again, it's uh, uh, unless I devise some other uh, attaching mechanism, um, that's, uh, that's what we'll have to use for now. Now you'll note that one of the things that uh, maybe I didn't anticipate or, or as I'm building this, basically because I drilled these holes uh, basically straight through or let's say on center, that basically we really don't have a stable tripod. So I need to um, modify this so each, uh, each of those two back legs are able to splay out um, both left and right or uh, further out. And I believe uh, possibly uh, the easiest way is probably to elongate this uh, outer hole so that will allow the pipe to tip. I'll probably leave this hole alone and uh, we'll modify this hole. Um, or you could uh, decide to uh, uh, bend the bolt and um, kind of make it a, a permanent. Uh, but then when I fold it back up, uh, if, I, if I have that as a permanent uh, unhinge, so to speak, then it will not fold as, as tight and as flat as I desire. So, you know, some compromises have to be made uh, uh, since we are, we're just uh, kind of making this up uh, as we go, but hopefully uh, maybe this will give you some ideas uh, on how to construct your own. So let's, uh, let's see what happens when we uh, uh, modify those outside holes and see if we can get some more uh, spread um, 
on the uh, on the legs for uh, a, a more stable base when when it's erected. Okay, so I went ahead and drilled a second hole, and uh, if <clears throat> if my concept works, then um, and it gives enough splay to the legs, then I will probably uh, take my uh, a carbide bit and uh, cut this. Uh, uh, into a, an oval so then uh, again when I take it up put it up and down I can splay the legs when I'm putting it up and then when I take it down I can bring the legs back forward all accomplished hopefully by being able to uh, pivot this bolt kind of like so so when I'm collapsed uh, folded I am uh, the bolt is more perpendicular when the legs are splayed out then the bolt moves, uh, hopefully pivots on this hole here, and um, um, and the outside will pivot in this, which will eventually become a, a slot. So let's uh, try to assemble that and uh, see what see what happens. Well, <clears throat> fortunately, I was uh, at least I think smart enough to go ahead and buy some uh, excess. Or different length of bolts so you can see that the 10 inch bolt that I was using now that the legs uh, are able to splay out uh, I don't even have the other link of the chain in and this wouldn't be enough to attach um, both nuts so I'm going to go ahead and insert this uh, longer bolt and hopefully that will uh, uh, keep everything uh, assembled as desired Okay, I've got the longer bolt uh, installed and you can see that uh, the, blade, the legs do splay and I still actually have some, shall we say, play in how far I can splay them. Uh, just laying flat, I think that's a pretty good angle, but let's go ahead and, and set it up right and see how it looks. And we may find out, uh, you know, even if I, I like the position of these holes right now and elongate them, maybe after uh, field use I might find I, I need a, uh, a wider splay uh, on the tripod. So I might need to elongate or uh, this these uh, slot on the side. So let's uh, get it in an upright position and see how it looks. Okay, we've got it set up right uh, now, you know, it looks like I've got some uh, pretty good uniform spread in in all directions. So I think that concept of uh, adding that second hole and then we'll go ahead and actually make, uh, uh, we'll cut that uh, uh, piece of metal or make it one um, oval or oblong hole. Um, but I think uh, I think for now that's uh, the most I want to uh, splay the legs because uh, keep in mind that as I lift this or add the extensions to it that basically those will be uh, create the, the legs to go out farther and farther as my stand or lift gets higher and higher. So um, let's, uh, let's work on that uh, but otherwise uh, um, or let's let's see if we can uh, attach some extensions and give you some ideas on on uh, uh, on how to uh, adjust it or how it uh, is adjustable by using these uh, these floor jacks. And by the way, these floor jacks I obtained at my local uh, 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 building supply. Uh, locally, it's called Menards. And they were uh, retailing for uh, about $39.99 uh, minus uh, uh, on sale 11% rebate. So, you know, we're about roughly 35 bucks a piece with tax. And uh, uh, let's, so let's see how high we can get this uh, right now after we put the hoist on it. Uh, we really won't have much uh, lifting power and or... Uh, Instead of the hoist, maybe if it's a, a lighter stone or a, a object that you're trying to list, lift, maybe a, a, a wire cable uh, come along uh, might be adequate as well. 
So a little experimentation. At some point we'll need to figure out uh, some kind of a, a foot pad uh, to keep it from uh, uh, digging into the ground and for and also to keep it from slipping on uh, hard surfaces. But um, maybe we'll end up using some combination of these plates that came with it um, and or these adjustable pins uh, that that go in the bottom of these extensions. So a uh, little fabrication is, is yet to come and uh, we'll, uh, let's see if we can get it to a little higher in the air and see what happens. The other thing we'll need to do is also um, to keep the legs from splaying, we want some kind of a, a retainer to keep, uh, uh, to keep them from splaying or from kicking out from underneath you. So whether it's a, a rope going from foot to foot or a chain or something, uh, we'll, uh, we'll figure that out based on some of the materials I have on hand. Okay, as we get ready to assemble the extensions, you'll see that the, the kit uh, is one of these kits come with these two pins and each tube has two holes. So in a permanent uh, um, uh, installation to support a floor, their intended use, uh, basically they use these two pins line them up with uh, two holes in the larger tube. Um, what I think I'm going to start with, or depending on um, stowing, but uh, uh, initial assembly, you may, uh, if you have a, a vague idea, if do you want it at a, a mid height, uh, do you want it fully extended, um, but there's a couple couple ways to go, and then also uh, possibly for stowage. So let's take this middle one. So I've inserted a bolt in the the top adjustable position. Uh, at this point, um, you may decide you don't even want to. Uh, you just want that as a stop. So simply slide the tube in. Oops, sorry for the angle. And basically. Now we've at least extended it uh, just by doing that by a couple feet. As we get it upright and decide that uh, uh, we want this uh, higher, then we'll probably, we may just leave that bolt alone and then extend this tube further out and install another bolt uh, as, as a, either a stop or you can interlink the the two tubes together so or in the case of over here if you want it fully extended we want at least two uh, holes in the depth of at least two holes and uh, then we'll stick our pin in or our bolt in and that will uh, that's our maximum length. So, and then again for stowage, uh, if we so desi decide, uh, if we find out that it's not too heavy, and for uh, quick and or uh, storage, quick and convenient storage, we might not want any pins in so that we can slide the entire sorry for the camera angle, slide the entire tube right inside the other. So a few different options to go with, but I think what we'll do is, is at least we'll start with uh, maybe having a fixed bolt or pin in the top position and um, then uh, let's try rising it, raising it in place and uh, uh, see what kind of a leg splay we get and also um, keep in mind we'll need to create some kind of a, a retainer to keep the legs from splaying. And that could even be uh, possibly maybe we'll use longer bolts up here and just have some chain uh, from leg to leg at a higher point 
rather than I've seen on some videos where they have as part of their foot they've got some kind of a a hole maybe even a chain link link or something to run rope through my only concern with that is having a a rope run for, on the ground level from leg to leg is it's a possibly an obstruction or or a safety uh, issue of tripping or catching on that rope at ground level but uh, we'll uh, again uh, we'll kind of work with figure that uh, solution out as as we go but for now uh, I'm going to place uh, stop pins in the uppermost position of each leg and uh, we'll uh, increase the height from there so before I do that, I see that we're getting up to about 20 minutes in video length here. So let's pause this and we'll call it the end of part one. And in our next video, uh, we'll see it in any, hopefully in, any, in an erected position and uh, uh, more of a fully assembled uh, uh, unit.